Hello everyone, welcome to part 2 of our Coromon team builder guide. In part 1, we introduced how easy it is to get into competitive Coromon. We also reviewed most of the basic roles you want to fill on your Coromon team. And we introduced Barrett's damage calculator, which has a really great feature that allows you to select Coromon based off the role you want to fill. If you're excited for part 2, if you like part 1, if you like Coromon or monster taming content, make sure to like the subscribe button and let's go ahead and jump on in. Today we'll be discussing the types of teams you might be using in competitive Coromon. We're going to mostly focus on 6v6, but we will sprinkle in a little 3v3 here and there. The types of teams we're going to go over are balance, offensive, bulky offensive, defensive, and an honorable mention stall. So let's go ahead and get started with balance teams. For most balance teams, you're going to want to fill six roles. Sweeper, tank, physical wall, special wall, a support mon, and some kind of wall breaker. If you have questions about what these roles specifically are, I highly recommend you check out part one where we went into more depth on each of these roles. The goal of a balanced team is to ensure that you have an initial answer to most things your opponent is going to be running. That's why we have both a physical and dedicated special wall. We have a sweeper that will likely be a different kind of attacker compared to a wall breaker. We have a tank to kind of absorb hits and be that glue. Then we have a support mon likely that will have hazards and or hazard removal to ensure that your opponent doesn't gain the hazard advantage. When I think of balanced teams, I typically start with something like a sweeper that I want to build around. Typically what you're going to do is build around something like Octo and then plug in different Coromon that will support Octo and eventually sweeping while still filling the other 5 roles on your team. In part 4, we're going to have an in-depth team builder for different types of teams, but this gives you a general introduction to what you're doing with the balance team. You're filling all of your different roles, you're valuing utility, and you have typically some kind of game plan in mind for your sweeper, and ultimately, you want an initial switch in or answer to most things your opponent's going to carry on most teams. Next we'll talk about defensive teams. And while you're filling the same 6 roles you would on a balanced team, I really want to highlight your tank, physical wall, special wall, and support mon. Likely because those 4 mons are going to have the synergy to take on top tier threats or the most overused core mon that you'll see in either 3v3 or 6v6. One of the big differences between a balanced team and a defensive team is that on your defensive team, that core that you've created of tank, physical wall, special wall, and support is going to do most of the heavy lifting in your battle. So you're not going to be bringing in your wall breaker all that often unless we eventually get momentum moves or you get something on a dead switch. And your sweeper likely won't come in until the very end of the game because you're expecting your defensive core to have smart switches, utility moves, hazards, and hazard removal to set up the rest of the game for your two offensive Coromon. I also want to highlight the fact that on balanced teams, you may not have a specific special or physical wall for the top tier Coromon in the game. You may just have more generic mons that fit in terms of typing or synergy, whereas on defensive teams, you're specifically saying this defensive core is hard to break for my opponent and that's where my pressure is coming from to then bring something in like a wall breaker like Burialis or a sweeper like Octo. So they're slightly different. It's a very tangential evolution from your balance team. But again, the emphasis on having that really strong defensive core and smart switches that put pressure on your opponent. Lastly, defensive teams are a good foil to offensive teams which are going to stack a lot of wall breakers or sweepers on one team to hopefully overwhelm you. For balanced teams, you may get overwhelmed with a constant stream of offense, but ideally on defensive teams, you have a core that can withstand that with utility moves, hazard removal, and hazards to get chip on your opponent, ultimately for your wall breakers and sweepers to turn that around. With that being said, let's jump into bulky offense, which is a very common offensive team for Coromon right now. Bulky offense is going to focus on Coromon that can take hits and dish out a lot of damage. So likely you want to have something like two tanks, a support mon, your physical special, and for your sweeper, that will likely be a bulkier Coromon, something like Volbrute, 
that can trap you and set up multiple inner pieces to then just blow your team away. But a change here is that instead of having a wall breaker, we're going to bring in another tank because the idea is that we want to have as much bulk on our team in addition to offense. In my opinion, a lot of teams start to veer towards bulky offense because it's so effective in Koromon. There are no dual typing, so it's hard to deal one hit KOs to any one Koromon in the game, even with some of the offensive mons, except for things like Barry Alice and Yukaklaw, which are just super powerful and probably you'll see on a bulky offense team anyway. But ultimately, there are a lot of Koromon that can take hits and deal a lot of damage. Volbrut comes to mind, Malavite comes to mind, Yukaka comes to mind as well. And again, with your sweeper, something like Per Gas that's really bulky with its trait that allows you to match HP of your opponent, with something like Epiphany, which raises your defense and attack, allows you to stack multiple boosts to the point where your opponent is unable to break your team. One downside to using bulky offense is that if you do get chipped down or you're facing a defensive team that has a strong core, ultimately your team is going to be pretty slow and you do have a very high chance of getting reverse swept. So for example, if you're going up against a defensive team and as you've been going through the match your team is worn down because of spike trap or Kawana Rock chip damage and everyone is maybe at 25%, 10%. Unfortunately, that offense isn't as potent because likely your opponent has one or two Koromon that naturally outspeed or with investment outspeed and then can easily start to take your Koromon out at the end game. So something to keep in mind that you want to get those hits in early, you want to be good with your predictions and your switches because towards the end of the game, you're at a disadvantage whereas in the beginning of the game, you have much more advantage with your bulky Koromon still healthy. The last thing I'll say about bulky offense is that you always want to keep in mind once your Koromon has done its job. Once it's no longer bulky enough, or is outsped by lots of things, or no longer a soft check, it's time to sack it to get something in for free. You don't want to keep switching in your offensively oriented Koromon into hits. You want to ultimately be really efficient with how you're using your Koromon's HP, using their skills, using their SP to ensure that they can be maximized throughout the match. Before we get to our honorable mention, which is stall teams, we will talk about offensive teams, which are always fun. They're precarious, they're high risk, they're high reward, and likely you're gonna have a sweeper, two wall breakers, a tank, a support, and then some kind of wall on that offensive team to ensure that you're always putting pressure on your opponent. For offensive teams, a few things are especially important. One, you want to make sure you have some fast mons in there. Two, you're likely going to have a lot of choice items like the Alma Stone, the Pista Stone, the Acker Stone. Things that artificially boost your speed or attacking stats. You also want to make sure you get your predictions right. You don't have a lot of defensive leeway. A lot of your mons are not coming in to take multiple hits. So you want to make sure you get your switches right. You want to identify your opponent's checking counters to your mon so that you can easily switch something in or double. And you absolutely want to make sure you have hazards on your opponent's side of the field. Any kind of chip damage from Spike Trap, Burning Coals, Kuwana Rock, anything like that turns some 2 hit KOs into Okos and things of that nature. So you absolutely want to make sure you're maximizing the amount of damage your opponent's taking per turn. Every switch should be punished predict some of those special walls and physical walls coming in. Offensive teams are high risk, high reward, so it's full throttle the entire time. Like we mentioned previously, we will do a deep dive team builder for part four of this series. This is just an introduction to some of the teams that you'll likely be using. And lastly, we will quickly talk about stall. There are two kinds of stall in Koromon. There are HP stall, which is a little bit harder to I would say successfully implement with things like Toxic not being available in Koromon and Hazards being a little bit easy to remove with things like Goldbeak running around. But you can stall SP, which is the ability or what is needed for your opponent or yourself to use skills. There are a few ways to stall all SP. One way is using Heat Wave, which is a weather in Koromon that will make non-fire type Koromon use more SP for each skill. 
You can put down Electro Mines as well, which is going to deplete the SP of any non-Electro type Coromon entering the field. You can also use things like Power Talons to zap your opponent's SP directly. So, there are two types of stall in Coromon. They're not well fleshed out at this point in time, so we may do another video at another point in time to talk more about them. But for now, we have HP and SP stall, but they're not fun. And if you join to stream with those, I'm going to complain the entire time. And that will do it for part two of our Coromon team building series. After part one and part two, you should be able to one, get into competitive Coromon, two, identify the roles of your team, three, access to damage calc, and now four, should have a good sense on the type of teams that you want to run when you do get into competitive Coromon. If you enjoyed this video, you're excited about the series, you enjoy Coromon and other Monster Team content, please make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you for part three. Bye everybody!